problem with me. Well, when they're out to kill someone, you know, when they're in these downsizing slaughters, they, they're like lions in a herd of wildebeest. They go straight for their prey. They ignore everything else. I'm not a wildebeest, okay? I'm the news director of this show. You've got to protect me on this. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to hide out in the long grasses over this one. I want that uh, condo in St. Bart's, and I, I need a few more well-playing years to get it. Got a meeting, got to go. One second, one second. Someone's out to kill me. How do I find out who it is? Maybe your parking spot's a clue. Parking? Well, why did they give you that leaky spot? I finally got through to parking for you. Hey, sir, I, I thought you were parking there. No, I'm a building services coordinating secretary, but I had the movie out of the leaky spot. Great, great. I, no, I appreciate this. You know, it's a, I, I've, um, you know, th this is not a, a racial or anything, but, you know, um, you know I've worked with, you know, J Japanese people before, and you, you want to get something done. I'm Chinese. Anyway, um, it's great. You're a genius. I appreciate it. And where did they put me? Nowhere yet. Nowhere? They're reviewing your application before they assign a new spot. Wait a second. You took me out of one spot and you didn't have another spot for me? You gave them a doctor's letter about your foot, right? Yes, yes. What's that got to do with this? There seems to be some confusion over that doctor and your family doctor that's listed in your personnel file. What are you talking about? They called your family doctor to confirm the letter. Those are two different doctors. I didn't get my family doctor to write the letter. I got another doctor to write the letter. Right. After a while, they realized that they should have called the other doctor. Something came up, and it turns out you're seeing both doctors about the same foot problem and getting painkillers from both of them. Apparently now, the two doctors are into it. The doctors are into my parking spot. Your painkillers. How can you sit there and be so cool about this? This is a disaster, okay? And you can just sit there and be that cool, right? Is this sort of some kind of zen thing that you... I think I have to go. No, no, this is. This is some kind of zen thing. The whole zen thing? I just don't buy it. No one has a clue what any of them are thinking, and they've been getting away with it for far too long. Well, you're allowed your opinion. Oh, now you're doing it. Doing what? You're patronizing me. This is the Western equivalent of Zen. I know what you're doing, but I also know what you're thinking. That's the difference. Uh, I'm not actually thinking anything. Yeah, you're thinking patronize him because he's going to be fired anyway. If anything, I was thinking more that you're uh, getting just um, a little paranoid. Yeah, well, you don't know how this corporation works. It's all about parking. Okay, I should, um, I've got to go. So the guy goes to the psychiatrist. He says, Doc, my brother thinks he's a chicken. The psychiatrist says, why don't you take him for therapy? He said, I would, but we need the eggs. Want a cigarette? No, thanks. When they want to push you out of here, it's never bad performance. It's always downsizing. Failure to perform would set a terrible precedent that would threaten 90% of the jobs up top. When they want you out, it always starts with the little signs, and no one can right. tell you why it's happening, and right. definitely no one will take any direct responsibility. Yeah, tell me. Now, a guy I know in arts program, last week they took away his VCR. Right? Right. You can find out why or who gave the order. Just some guy shows up with a piece of paper, it's gone. Right? Right. Then last Monday, they take away his parking spot. Right? Yeah. Uh, Wednesday, they don't invite him to the department meeting. Right? Yesterday, he's gone. Really? Yeah. God. You know, Zen, I've been thinking about this. It's very internal, right? They hold it in, they hold it in, they hold it in, and boom, Pearl Harbor. They turned something over like in a month, and they made like $200,000. Um, they took your couch. I, I just brought a chair in here. Uh, who, who took my couch? I don't know. I just want to know what's going on, okay? What's going on? What does that mean? With me in the show. Nothing that I know of. Nothing that you know of? What does that mean? You're the regional head. I'm sorry. I don't get this. Someone took my couch away. I don't handle furniture. Jillian, Shelley's on three. She wants to know if the Mercer Street Grill's okay for lunch. Yes, but tell her to hold. I have to confirm aerobics. Can I go? So the testicles on that bear shipped over to China. I figure it will fetch me five grand U.S. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. What do they do with them? I don't know. Freeze them and make nutsicles. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. Is this about my couch? <laughs> no. 
Is this something I should know? Go. No. <laughs> no, what? Nothing, nothing. Okay, forget it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Huh. Yeah, so I hear the whale penis is really big in Asia, too. I've heard that. The dixical? Right. <laughs> 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 What's so funny? Nothing. <clears throat> Is this a little laugh at my parking spot? No. Why? No reason. Yeah. So then what did he say? So, Bob, if you don't like my work, fire me. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Okay. Nothing. Everyone freaked out when they called you to do the segment on the new TV season. You know, John Hasselkopf has made a career of trashing a corporation. Well, I think they take it all a little too seriously. Uh -huh. I think you're going to find there's a new wave of optimism here after these cuts. The dust has settled, and the people who made the cut are more confident, they're less paranoid. I mean, the sniping has stopped. Assholes up there, they're completely gutless. They fire you with parking, with couches, with voicemail, and no one has the guts to face you. Absolutely. Well, screw them. I can bury the entire board of directors with all I know. John Hasselkopf would love this. He'd run it in the Globe and Mail in a second. I'm not just kissing ass here, John, because you're a critic, but I think you're great. You've written brilliantly about this place. But the thing you miss, because you don't work here, is the epidemic level of, of, of ass-kissing and backstabbing and small-minded politicking that leads to that third-rate chicken shit programming. I have to be honest. I don't think anyone on the inside has ever really been honest about this. They have a new policy where they clean all executive couches annually. So they took yours, cleaned it, and it's on its way back. They only took my couch to clean it? Yeah, I saw it in the hallway. It looks a lot better. And as far as the voice messages go, you know, the mysterious Bob guy, he copied you and sent his own message. And it turns out that the stories about the government were on our series, Deficit Cutting, Who Wins, Who Loses. And the reason they were discussing it up top is because they thought it was the best series on the provincial government's policy since they came to power. That was the voicemail. That was the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, no. They figured that the voicemail you left in response telling them to shove it up their tight little asses was a joke, but not very funny. Oh, my God. John has a cup. Where is he? I think they finished. I saw him going towards the elevators. Oh, God. We're off. Have a good time. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, I gotta speak to you just for a second. Just take a sec. Never reveal your anxieties like that to Jillian again. I didn't reveal anything. Your job, your couch. Now, that little girl can smell blood. It just puts ideas in her head. I don't trust her. You don't trust her. You chose her. Well, I also chose my first husband. He screwed everyone in sight. Now, just, just be more careful what you say and do while I'm gone. Real nice to meet you. Oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. John, I'm, I'm glad I caught you. Just one last thing, okay? Just one last thing, please, please. Just one last thing. Um, this whole story about the corporation, um, I'm not sure this is the best time for this kind of story. Why? John, this place has been decimated by budget cuts, okay? I, these people have families to feed. Look, I'm not trying to destroy anybody's life. Okay, look. I had this root canal and the dentist really screwed it up, okay? And I've been taking like four, five, six Percodans a day. I can't tell whether it's in fact and fiction. I just don't think it's a good idea to write this story now, okay? I'm begging you just not to write the story. Look, I gotta go to the, uh, I gotta go back to the office. John, write your column, okay? Because you're a critic, and critics kill everything. But not like animals who eat what they kill. You just let it lie there and rot and move on to your next self-serving column. Because you can't do it. You want to destroy everything around you that has any life. Okay, write it. You're a hack, John. Write your column. It's water off my back. Water off my back. I don't give a shit.